Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. I remember growing up, I had a dream. We had a vacant lot next door that just uh, was begging for a little boy to dig a hole in it. And not just any hole, but my dream was to dig and make an underground clubhouse because I thought that would be very cool. And I could do it. I had two strong arms. Well, not that strong, and a shovel, and uh, I got to work. But what I wasn't taking into account, that in the semi-arid climate of Pueblo, Colorado, uh, that, that that ground was, was rock hard dry, and it was hard clay, and it had broken shale in the, uh, scattered throughout it. And after many days of digging, I had carved out a hole two feet deep. And it began to occur to me that this underground clubhouse was going to take a lot more work than I had thought it was going to take. I maybe got that hole down to four feet when I decided to uh, abandon the dream. Maybe you noticed in the reading you just heard read, but that the story of Pentecost is a story uh, that mentions dreams as well. That when the, uh, Jesus' disciple Peter, he got up to address the crowd and, uh, who had gathered because of all these strange goings-ons on the day of Pentecost, he quotes a verse from the book of Joel. And he says, In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. I asked someone this week, Ask them in their opinion if they thought I was seeing visions or dreaming dreams. You know, which category? And they said, Paul, you don't want to know. But what that chapter, that verse tells me is that the Holy Spirit is in the dream business. All right? And not every dream we have comes from God. I mean, I think the underground clubhouse was not one of those, uh, you know, God-inspired dreams. Though it was a very cool dream. But the the dreams that do come from God, God has this remarkable ability of making them become real. So I want to share with you, I mean, three dreams this congregation has has had in the last 10 years and and how how, uh, it started from a dream and became real. It just has been amazing to watch. And I want to start with it. About 10 years ago, one of our members made us aware of a, of a ministry that has started in South Dakota called Helping Hands for Haiti. We talked about this a few weeks ago. And uh, it's a ministry that helped uh, uh, build schools in, in uh, rural mountainous areas. And that dream struck a chord with us. And we began a relationship with a, a rural village called Jamel. And we helped them build a school. We helped them furnish a school. We helped fund a, a, a rice mill that would provide income for the community so they could pay the teachers for the school. And, and now we're involved in raising funds to start build a second school in a neighboring village. It's, it went just from, from a dream to something that has become rather remarkable for both uh, Jamel and Peace Lutheran. Dream number two, about that same time, the Holy Spirit put it in the heart of one of our members that we could help feed, uh, provide nutritious meals for children in Jamel and places like that around the world if uh, Sioux Falls had a local chapter of Kids Against Hunger. And uh, with a lot of faith on that dream, uh, Daryl Johnson and Art Winky soon discovered that the Holy Spirit had more in mind for them than just, a, you know, kind of a slow start. And it was no time at all before they had packaged their one millionth meal. Another dream, inspired by the work of, uh, of our Lutheran group here in town doing the, the mobile food pantry, uh, Food to You ministry, there's a group of members here again who thought, that, hey, wouldn't it be great that Peace Lutheran could be a distribution site for that food ministry? But one of the members happened to be a social worker uh, working here in Sioux Falls, and she shared that, you know, there are a lot of feeding ministries in Sioux Falls, but let me tell you what folks really need. They need a way to get the stuff that you can't buy with food stamps. They need uh, a way to get toilet paper and laundry detergent and diapers and things like that. And thus, Necessities for Neighbors was born, and so that on the first Sunday of every month, uh, thanks to all of you bringing these products to church, we distribute those household necessities to over 300 families who show up here in order to get a little help in that way. 
I mean, it's hard for me just to stop at three uh, and to share only three of those, those what I'd call spirit-generated dreams uh, and, and the way that peace and its members have got to be a part of those dreams the last 10 years. I could go on and on because this is a place where the Holy Spirit is causing us to dream dreams and then giving us the boldness to step out on faith and, uh, and to work to make those dreams become real. So our Imagine campaign that we are winding up today, or, or we're starting it, however you want to figure, you know, starting our three-year pledge period, but ending talking about it so much, it's a campaign, really, to make dreams happen. Even the dreams that we haven't yet dreamed of yet, because it's a dream to pay off our mortgage loan, and then, by doing so, free up $200,000 annually that could be applied to new dreams, those dreams we haven't even yet imagined. It's also a dream to fund seminary scholarships so that that's, uh, those who are filled called into the ministry will not be prevented by debt from answering the call. And like any of the dreams that the Holy Spirit gives to us, I think when you're talking about responding to a dream, it's always a matter of a want to rather than a, a have to. Because just think about it. When the Holy Spirit was poured out upon the disciples on the day of Pentecost, their hearts weren't suddenly filled with a, a do list of all the have tos that the Holy Spirit gave to them. No, their hearts were on fire with all the things that they wanted to do in the name of Christ as a response to God's love that had embraced them and had made them new. And we're still experiencing that same kind of Pentecost joy 2,000 years later as we're responding to that same Holy Spirit who is calling us to join together in various ways called to the mission of Christ and what Christ is doing in the world. And when we're giving dreams to dream by the Holy Spirit, those are all in the category of things that really we want to do and, we, and that we gladly do them with joy. Not to say that there aren't struggles in planting those dreams or sacrifices. I mean, each of those dreams that I mentioned required effort and discipline in order to bring them about. Most dreams do. But like this quote that my wife Julie came across from author Augusta Contra, I think it works like this. Discipline is choosing between what you want now and what you want most. Kind of like that. Discipline is choosing between what you want now and what you want most. And for me, that really sums up uh, what it looks like to make dreams become reality. Because it always involves, you know, making decisions, always involves kind of rebalancing priorities and carving out a, a place, a space, and the resources for those dreams to go. But it's still, even if it's, it's the discipline to do that, it's still about getting to choose what we want to do the most. And that is a gift. And yes, paying off a debt takes discipline, whether you're talking about your home finances or here in this congregation. But it's still a discipline so that we get to do what we want to do the most. Now, I know each of us have multiple callings. We are, are called to do, uh, actually called to respond to more than just one dream in our lives. And there's just more than one dream requiring our focus. We're called to be good spouses. And, and uh, those of you who are married, we are called to be good parents and grandparents. Those of you who have children and grandchildren, that takes a whole lot of focus and a whole lot of time. And we're called to be good friends, and we're called to be good neighbors, uh, not only where we live, but good neighbors here in the cities of Sioux Falls, good citizens of this world. That requires our focus as well. I mean, we have many holy callings in our lives, and I know that our work together here at Peace is just one of those callings, uh, holy callings that God has given to us. And I also know that you know better than anybody else in this room how God is calling you to manage and distribute the resources that God has given you 
so that you can feed those dreams to which you have been called to. And that means you do not have to apologize in any way, shape, or form if you don't choose to give to this Imagine campaign. You are under no compulsion. Nobody is going to think any less of you. But I can only share with you why I'm excited about this campaign because one, it's going to put us on firmer financial ground so that whatever the Spirit is calling us to down the road, we're going to be ready, more ready for it than we are today. And secondly, I'm also excited that I know that when that debt is eliminated, there's going to be, be a potential for some serious money that will be freed up, that will virtually make anything we dream possible. Any of those things, uh, those dreams that you wrote and posted on the Imagine board out in the gathering area, any of those can happen. And I want to be a part of watching that all come about. Maybe you do too. So I think today and in the days ahead, our prayer for one another, whatever God is calling us to do should be this. May the Holy Spirit keep planting dreams in your own heart, dreams that really become want-tos in your life, dreams that are focused on making Christ known to others through the love and care that you show them. And may our prayer be that that same Spirit keeps planting dreams in our congregation. Dreams that, that uh, for the work that we are being called to do together. And may none of us ever tire of taking joy in watching the Spirit's dreams unfold before our very eyes. Amen. Now may the peace of God which passes all our understanding keep our hearts and our minds focused on Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.